Welcome to Whitlock Garage, where we're united by trucks. Today, we're giving you an inside look into one of the country's hottest custom auto upholstery shops. If you hadn't figured it out yet, we're in Cato's Custom Upholstery Shop in Atlanta, Georgia. You may know Cato from the TV show Iron Resurrection, but he's recently moved to Atlanta and he's now based out of Fuller Moto's shop here in Atlanta, Georgia. So we're really excited to be bringing you an in-depth look at his custom auto upholstery shop. Y'all stay tuned and we're gonna show you what he's all about and the kind of work that he produces on a day-to-day -day basis, putting custom interiors in classic trucks and cars. No store bought anything around here. Can you tell me what we're looking at right here, man? So, other than the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> so the obvious thing is a cup holder. On this one, usually people just bolt these just with this one piece here, just bolt them to the bottom of the seat. Or this one we're gonna pressure fit, uh, put some Velcro on the bottom here and put a little bit of Velcro on the, the front here. So what I did is just went in and put this in a truck, mocked up this front one, and then went ahead and cut the sides out here. So this follows the floor. Once this is done here, we're just going to wrap it in leather. All right guys, if you hadn't figured it out yet, all the work that Kato's doing is on Rick Cheeseman's 86 square body. Now y'all know this truck, we've shown it on the channel quite a bit, but Rick's got an updated interior by Kato and all the construction we've been showing you is on the cup holder. But we're gonna drop some more photos, some more footage in when Kato was working on the actual seat itself. But we'll tell you some more about that as we go. But wanted to let you know that all this work is being done on Rick's truck. So you're seeing it sort of in real time as it relates to the cup holder, but we're gonna flash back and show you some of the other footage that we got before we were actually documenting the building of the cup holders. What's up, what's up? <laughs> you wanna see the seat? Come on, check it out. More in Giles leather here. Uh, we wrapped all the, the hinges, uh, repainted, you know, sandblasted, repainted. Same with the underside of the seat, same way. Um, got the plaid material in here. I believe this comes out of like a, a VW Jetta. If you can see it from the front, you know, everything lines up, all the lines line up. It's good leather. You just had to treat about once a month and uh, your truck will smell like a million bucks. <laughs> you know, the top shapes are the same here. So you can see how that is. So that just goes around, sits on top there. This rolls around at a 45. That way, whenever you're pulling the material, you know, it tucks in, minus having some crazy wrinkles on the side there. And then this one is just the, the round part. So, each one of these will normally have a different uh, band that goes around them just because of the shape and sure, size. But the general uh, measurement of pop will be the same. So all I have to do is calculate how much I need to add to these. Yeah. Don't worry about nothing. So you just roll this on there. Pretty. If you were doing this at home or whatever, is is the stuff you go to the parts store and buy, just that spray can stuff. Yeah. We use spray can stuff just for, uh, we call it throwaway glue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just stuff we're gonna spray in temporary tack and we pull it off, that's what we use it for. Yeah, that's So cool. this stuff is yellow, it smells nasty. And, yeah, uh, it's quite potent for sure. Uh, yeah. I like it though. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Fernando, while he's cutting that out, you want to tell me what you're working on over here? 1961 Lincoln Continental. Oh, sweet. Uh, what we're doing is basically just bringing it back to original. Yeah. Nothing custom about this one. It's all strictly original, you know, two inch pleats with the piping and the white leather. Um, the cloth is uh, era specific. The owner 
of the vehicle brought it to us. Um, he said it took him about a year to locate all of the material to um, matching from uh, Lincoln, right? Isn't that yeah. what he said? Yeah. Oh, cool. He brought, so the, he brought leather us the, the leather, the vinyl, the cloth, uh, the walt rod, this little piping here. So all we had to do really was just uh, make sure everything lined up and all the measurements were the same and that's make cool. sure our stitching is straight and that's it. Really. All I'm doing here is just where I cut with the razor blade, I'm just making sure that, that everything is straight and flush with it mm -hmm. so you don't have any imperfections in it. So we're talking about time on how long it takes to do the cup holders. So I built two cup holders today. I started at 7.30 this morning, right? Yeah. So we took an hour, hour and a half lunch, and it's, it's two o'clock. Yeah. So there you go, for two cup holders. And I haven't even wrapped them yet. <laughs> right. So when somebody charges you X amount of dollars for this, just realize it's not just a simple job to do this. Right. You know? There's significant time that goes a, into a it. A ton of time. And I mean, you're, I can tell like you, you started out with a very simple form or simple framework that you were going to work with and now you're taking it and obviously expanding on it and that takes time. I mean, you're, you're yep. fitting it, test fitting it, the vehicle, mm -hmm. I mean, you're doing all, all these things to make it, to make it right and to make sure the tolerances are correct exactly. and so that right. it fits well. So we have yeah. that nice curve and that's the floor. All right, so we're checking out Kato's Metro, obviously. You want some? Man, oh. Check out the interior on this thing. So Kato, the question is, did you do your own interior? I did do my own interior. <laughs> <laughs> And I know this is built on the show, so a lot yeah. of people probably know a whole lot about this thing, but just a really cool setup. There we go. Dick yeah. Dick yeah, so I bet y'all probably recognize this. There it is. <laughs> LS1 with a little Georgia pilot on it. Got a lot of Georgia pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Got some headers on it. Yeah, it's just real basic, you know, nothing crazy. Yeah, that's the way my LS is in my truck. Yeah. That's all it takes, man. They don't have to be crazy. No, I think I was in time. run, dude. Hold my, you know, trans yeah. wheeler on. Oh, yeah. Man. Got a cool Willwood brake pedal there. That thing looks sick. Yeah, the computer's over the computer. here. Yeah. Hidden so you can get to everything. Just. Yeah, that's really cool. About as basic as you can get. And that's how we like them all with like garage, man. That's right. I don't want anything crazy. Then you I just want it to function. Yeah. Because the outside is so perfect. Yeah. Same with the floor. This whole center of the floor. So if you had to work on any of the, you know, four link or anything like this, this whole floor comes out. So all these, I hit all the bolts underneath these. <coughs> so I can lift them up. But That's okay. Yeah. I don't do that. Yep. But anyway, so they're so all, all the bolts are hidden under the strips. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's really cool. So what is the bag setup? So it's a four link in the rear? Yeah, four link in the rear. What's the axle out of you? Um, it's a S10 Blazer. Okay, cool. So it's got yeah. four wheel disc on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And so the front, about from where we're at here, forward is all S10. Okay. So which is, you know, nice. And we yeah. were able to put shocks on the front. And these are Budnick wheels, but you remember the name of them? I don't. Okay, though, this thing is super cool, man. Thank you. I appreciate you letting us come in and take a look at what you got going on. All right, so we're back at Kato's. We got this cup holder he's working on for Rick. So we got the cup holder already. Just threw some uh, black paint on it, obviously, just to kind of seal it up a little bit more. But what I did this morning, I went ahead and put a rabbit edge right around here on the wood. And what that does, that allows me to take that seam that's right here, where the pieces come together, and I can set it right in there and so there's no bulge out. What I'll do is go ahead and glue the top on. I'll glue this in place. But by putting that groove in there, one, it allows me to put my seam allowance, which is where the two pieces are sewn together, uh -huh. in there. But two, it allows me to keep that line straight when we fold this over. So you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Once I go ahead and glue the top on, and I'll flip it over, and then you'll see it. It'll just, it's straight, and you're not having to fight with it or yeah. anything else. I like to brush little stuff like this on, just so I don't get glue everywhere. It's nothing fancy, nothing crazy. What we are doing is gluing around this cup holder real good because I'm gonna flush cut this around. I'm not gonna set it down because I made that opening uh, really tight with a cup holder. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why we're gonna glue this top down. Now all this will just 
float, and I'll explain that in a minute what I mean by floating. What's the glue you're using there? I know we talked a little bit about this the other day. So that's a, it's called a Weldwood Landau top glue. Trim solvent, you can get it at um, your upholstery supply places. You won't be able to get this at any like Walmart or Target right. or anything like that. I mean, it's very specific to the industry. So you always want to glue one side of it, so your your substrate or your piece you're wrapping, and then your material material or, here. Yeah. yeah, so let me spit this out, and then let it just tack up. So you yeah. don't want to you don't want to have it where it's pulling up. You can kind of see where it's grabbing my hand. Yep. You don't want that. Depending on the weather and then where you're at in the world, is how long this glue will actually take to dry up. Okay. So it's different. I can tell you, you know, it's going to take five minutes here. It may take. 10 minutes, you know, in the north or somewhere else. Yeah, so okay. It is different. But that's the test. That's you the know, test. Still sticking yep. to your hand. Mm -hmm. and that's cool. Yep, because once it sticks, it sticks. Yeah. And it comes off. <laughs> or if it does come off, you're really going to. Yeah, you're going to mess something up. Yeah, exactly. So we have this set up. It's been about five or 10 minutes. Give or take, so we'll say seven to eight minutes. Right. <laughs> but you see how it's not really sticking right now. Yep. You know what I mean? And that's that's a good thing for for what we have going on because I can reactivate this glue with heat and a little bit of pressure. So what this allows me to do is just kind of line everything up where I need it, right? Yep. And then I can just come in here, put that seam right where it needs to go. See what I'm doing there? Yep. And all I did, I just mic'd out the thickness of this leather. I don't even remember what it was. Just set the router bit up to that and then put it right in there. So. It's been in there nicely. We want that smooth look so when you fold this over, there's no bulge or anything in this. So because of the glue and the way you've got that edge mm -hmm. beveled or routed, however you want to yep. say it, that when you pull that leather down over the front of the, the cup holder, it's not pulling it out of that. Correct. It's pulling it out of Yep. The and two, it just keeps everything real straight. And I'll show you here in a minute once we get all this um, glued down here on the top. But again, you see how I can pull it up if I want? And mm -hmm. that's because we let that glue um, set. And dry, and dry out. You see what I'm talking about, we're floating that, so it just means there's no glue that's gonna be anywhere on this front surface. So what that does, if there was a glue on there, we'd have to really hold this out and kind of pull it down and then set it in place and things like that. Before you ever push, put any pressure on it. To, Ex yeah. Yep, exactly. Because once it hits that glue, even though it's not tacky anymore, it's right. gonna, It'll or it's bite. not tacky to the touch, it's gonna adhere to that. Yep, yep. And this has done a lot of upholsters. I learned that trick from a, you know another upholster. Um, asking questions, just things like that. Don't yep. be afraid to ask. That's Absolutely. the most important part. So what I do is just have my steamer here. I'm just gonna steam this. What I'm doing to just kind of reactivating that glue that's under there. Very cool. And then I just take a roller, it's just a dynamite roller. Mm -hmm. What I did is I rounded off the edges here. So when you push, it doesn't leave any like track marks, you know, like when you're mowing a grass or anything. Yep. And uh, just take that. Once we're all done, I just press it in. What this allows too is that you're getting, I hate the word perfect or 100%, but let's just say 98% adhesion because you're, <laughs> you're pressing it down in place, right? So if you press with your fingers, you got gap in between your hands. And so you're, you're not getting all of that area, that surface area. And so now you can see how we're pulling up on that real hard yeah. and it's not, not coming. Even. Right. And so that's, that's what we want. Have my fancy dancy little hammers that are polished. Yeah. Boom. It's time for the cup holders. <laughs> These just came from Amazon. So. 
So what size are those holes? Do you remember that off the top of your head? Let me show you this. You want to see how tight this is? Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Airtight. Airtight. <laughs> there we go. Now, once it gets a struck here, we'll install them. Sweet. Yep. There we are. It's got a nice side profile. Match the floors. time for your cup holder. <laughs> Go figure. I mean, it is about 4.30 and it is Monday. And if you see Rick's face, look at his face. Go on. He's had a long day at work. Been a long day. He's looking like he needs a new new cup holder for his new Kato right. interior. But you see my face? I'm always happy. Yeah. <laughs> look, Rick is so happy. Look at Rick. He's he happy so now. Happy. Happy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put this thing in, man. You ready? Yeah. The easiest installation you've ever done. Oh, yeah, it is, right? Here, let me show you. Look. <laughs> looks like it belongs there. <laughs> looks, like, looks like it was made for it. Oh, go figure. <laughs> it's because it was. <laughs> it was made for it. All right, Rick, so now that you've got a complete Kato interior, what do you think about this thing, man? It's pretty awesome. I mean, we did take it up to Chattanooga, so I got to ride on it for a few hours, and uh, it's it's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Nothing over the top. And, yeah, I, uh, I agree with that. It smells really good in there now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kato, I'm gonna put you on the spot, man. You're new to Atlanta. Gonna Hello, move. everybody. What we do is mainly we do a lot of C10 trucks, obviously, but the primary point of our business is old hot rods and things like that. But since I've been to Atlanta, we've worked on Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches, all kinds of stuff that I never thought I'd be working on. But two, I kind of wanted to expand the palette of what's around here and do both instead of just concentrate on one thing with the old cars. So with that being said, if you have something you want done, call me. 515-822-5851. Do the music. Who made these door panels? USA One Industries. Yeah, that, that's a great panel. So if anybody wants some good door panels yeah. for your C10, these fit great. Mm -hmm. 